Greetings everybody, this is Sweet Beats with Sweet Beats Tech Stop. I wanna take a few minutes and show people how to get to the diagnostics testing screens uh, within your Yamaha AW4416. And this is something that's laid out pretty clearly in the service manual. The service manual is available for free online. You can find it in different places. Um, but sometimes it's helpful for folks to have a visual on it. And uh, a couple things you wanna have beforehand if you wanna test these things. Again, the diagnostic screen goes through a couple of columns of different tests you can do to test the functionality of the different features and functions and systems on your AW4416. This is something that you might talk to, like if you're planning on buying an AW4416 from somebody, you might be able to refer them to this video and ask them to run the diagnostics testing for you and send you a picture of the results so you know that there isn't something catastrophically wrong with the system you're looking at. Or if you have one and you wanna check it out and make sure that it's got a clean bill of health, or if you start having problems and you need to try and diagnose and narrow down what the root of the problem is, you can use this uh, inbuilt functionality to check that out. And a couple of things that you'll want to have handy beforehand, if you want to test the function of the uh, digital SPDIF input and output, you'll want to have a suitable cable for that. Um, you know, a RCA type uh, plug cable um, suitable for digital SPDIF uh, transmissions, a MIDI cable to test the MIDI in, uh, out, and through jacks, if you use a foot switch, have that handy. You want to have that plugged in. If you use a mouse and you want to make sure that all the mouse functions are working, plug all that stuff in before you get started. So um, the way that you get into the diagnostics testing is that while the system is off, and there are multiple versions of it in the system, but the one to get into the full menu of tests is to press and hold the home and utility keys while you power it on. Now I don't have three hands, so I'm gonna get it powered up uh, and then we'll be right back. But you hold the home and utility keys and then switch it on. And so once you switch it on while holding the home and utility keys, You'll quickly get to this screen. Uh, splash screen gives you some details about the operating system, uh, the build date of the OS, uh, etc. And once you're at that screen, you can go ahead and let the keys go. And it tells you it's initializing and in diagnostics mode, you see there at the top. And then you'll get to this screen. And this is the diagnostic screen. And you'll see we've got you know, a menu of different diagnostics testing. Um, this first one tests the functions of all of the switches. Um, and we can take a look, brief look at all of these. Um, the next one tests the functions of all of the LED indicators that are supposed to light. Next one takes you through a test of the, all of the elements of the meter panel, making sure those are all lighting correctly. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, the LCD is the screen itself. FL is the fluorescent display, the meter panel. Um, and then different um, sections of the main system board and the RAM, the different um, uh, main signal processing centers, making sure that those are working correctly and communicating correctly. Uh, and then tests for all of the encoders, including the PAN and EQ knobs, as well as the jog shuttle wheel. Um, and then um, testing the drive, just communicating with the internal drive. SCSI, this test tests the functionality of the SCSI data port that is on the back. I never test this because I don't have an external SCSI device, but if you have one and you use it, um, I think you can have that connected and verify that that's working. Slot one and two, now this is interesting. The manual denotes a uh, special test cards to install in option slots one and two. I don't have those, so I just don't run those tests. Um, but rather, when I'm testing a unit, I've got some known good working option cards, and if I can get them to function and access um, those features and functions of those cards when they're installed, 
I assume that the option slots are working fine. Uh, this, similar to the SCSI connector, tests the functionality of the two host connector. There's a special test cable for that. I don't have that, um, so I avoid that test, um, and I don't happen to use that feature, but if you do, uh, maybe you have a way that you can run that test. MIDI, that's going to test the functions of the MIDI in, out, and through, and it starts by having it in, plug the cable into the MIDI in and out, run the first test, and then hop this over to the other and run the second test. Uh, and that just tests communication through and um, in the MIDI ports. Um, mouse, again, if you have a mouse and you use it, hook that up before you power it on. It's no different than when you're using your AW4416 in normal operation. You should never plug the mouse in after it's powered up. Always plug that in beforehand. That holds true when you're doing diagnostics testing. Um, some of these that are X'd out, uh, obviously these ones that are X'd out that are blank are X'd because there's no features uh, loaded in them. Some of these are a little different depending on um, what version of the operating system is loaded. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly why, but the there is a CDRW that's installed in this AW4416 that's working just fine, but apparently there's no diagnostics test for it. Um, word clock IO, again, you know, have BNC cable, that's another one I forgot to mention. Have one of those handy if you use word clock. It'll ask you to loop a cable from the in to the out and run the test. Uh, and then there's a fader test. There's two fader tests, actually. Oh, sorry, we skipped over digital IO, so that's your SPDIF. And there's two fader tests, one that you can test the faders uh, using actually the song quick record mastering and CD play buttons. Um, song and quick record take the faders through the extreme uh, top and bottom of their operational range and mastering and CD play take them uh, to points at you know about uh, probably about almost half travel and then ones at, at zero. Um, at, yeah, so anyway, so that's, that's that one test and those buttons actually make the faders do those actions at all points. Uh, as you noticed, we're not running a test and I hit those buttons and it makes the faders do those actions. Um, but when you enter the test, it's prompting you to do that and make sure that it does what they're supposed to do and then say, okay. Um, uh, the SD RAM, that is also SCSI related. So unless you have something connected to the external SCSI port, uh, that test cannot run. And then the real time clock test just basically prompts you to enter the current time and make sure that it, that it stays after you enter at the date and time. But the diagnostic screen will also, without running any tests, just entering diagnostics mode, tells you if the battery is okay. So if the battery is low um, or depleted, it's going to tell you that right here. Um, so uh, at any rate, so when you enter, so you enter any of these, you can cursor down or up and choose any or all that you want to enter. And once you've highlighted the one you want to run, you simply hit enter. So for the switch one, for instance, notice that you get a kind of a pictogram of all of these switches, and it's going to take you through, prompting you to hit each one sequentially, making sure that they work. And in this way, that will tell you if you've got a button that's not working. If the button is not working when you get to it, you will not be able to move forward and you know that you've got one or more failed buttons. Um, so that's how that test works. We won't go all the way through it. Let's see. Uh, is it solo plus cancel? Oh, there we go. Okay. Now notice it says NG. That's for no good or not good uh, failed test. But that's because I, in this case, I canceled it before I finished. If I'd gone all the way through it, um, I know for a fact that all the buttons are working on this AW4416 and it would say okay there. Um, the LED one, um, it's nice because it just lights up every LED that's supposed to light. 
on the AW4416. It does them sequentially and then will flash them all off and all back on. So you can get at a glance um, if they are all working. And there it goes. And I just know from experience, these ones do not light. Uh, these two do not light. This chunk doesn't, these don't, these don't, these three don't. So that's how it's supposed to look. And there's a picture in the service manual that tells you this also, makes, makes note of which ones do light and which ones are non-lighted. So, and then you can see there, since we let the test run all the way through, it says okay. The LCD test, that just takes the screen, dark, light, and then dark, and then leaves it there so you can identify if there's any burned pixels in there. This one looks good. Uh, and then the fluorescent display, you'll see it goes through kind of a sequence of lighting everything up in sequence and then everything so you can make sure that everything's functioning there. And then the, um, deep, that's, a, that's a really quick test for the DP RAM. And that's okay. And then this is one of the dig Digital S Signal Processing Centers, DSP-5. This one takes a little bit longer. It'll tell you when it's done. So you just let it run until it's done. And if there's any part of it that fails, it tells you which part. Not that I would know what to do with that at that detail, but there are people that do. Um, so all tests are okay. And then DSP-6. So sometimes when one or more of these um, areas have issues, sometimes it can be connections inside that need to be reseeded. That's something that Generally, anybody that's comfortable opening up the bottom cover and maybe just disconnecting and reconnecting certain connections uh, can do with some, with some knowledge. And then the encoder tests, it just prompts you start with the pan knob, sweep it all the way right, sweep it all the way left. But it's checking every step uh, in the detent. So you can, you can sweep them fast, um, but it'll catch if there's no signal at one or more detents for each of the encoders. And then jog shuttle. So this is saying um, spin the jog wheel and then back and then shuttle to the right and to the left, done, good. And then the IDE drive. This is also where you check and make sure that the LED for the LED or for the um, hard disk drive is working um, because that does not light during the LED test. Okay, so I always hit enter when I get to this one, make sure we get a little flash. Oh no, that's right. So here's the caveat I have a compact flash card installed uh, in this one. I've replaced the regular um, IDE hard disk drive with a compact flash card. And uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but you don't get the lighting of the disk drive indicator on this test. And that's also why this fails. I can't get the test to pass if the compact flash card is in there, but it works perfectly fine when recording. Um, the test platform just doesn't like something about the communication with um, the compact flash card. So don't be alarmed with that. Okay, I mentioned earlier, I don't have anything connected to the external SCSI port, so we're gonna skip that. And slot one and two, I don't have special test cards. Two host connector, I don't have anything for that. We do have a MIDI cable installed. This is what this one looks like when you do this. Um, it'll ask you, it just says make test loop and press enter. So just make sure that when you start, you have the cable connected to the, uh, what is that? The, yeah, the out, through, and the in. That's where you start is with it in these two positions for this first test loop. It doesn't tell you that, but that's where you're supposed to have it. And it says it's okay. And then it just tells you again, make test loop and press enter. Well, that means now 
move the out through over to the MTC port and then hit enter. And that's okay, we're done with that. I don't have the mouse connected for this test, but that just prompts you to move the mouse one direction, move the mouse another direction. It tells you which way to move it and then hit the buttons um, to verify that everything's working correctly there. And then the word clock, I forgot to connect the BNC cable, but it's essentially the same as like the MIDI. It says make a test loop here. Just loop a BNC cable from the in to the out. Um, and then the digital IO is similar, although this one has two components. So we've made our test loop. We plugged our cable into the SPDIF in and out, and it does two checks. It does a, a, a um, status and an audio. So it runs two components in that test. And then again, I mentioned in the fader, it's, you know, it says it's prompting you to push these different buttons and make sure that the faders do what they are supposed to do um, with each of those button pushes. And then again, this SD RAM that's related to the SCSI bus, the external data, SCSI data port, and I don't have anything for that, so I can't run that. Uh, and then the real time clock, again, when you hit that, it just prompts you to enter the current time and date. It's current here because as it says on the screen here, my battery is okay. It says no good here because I didn't re-enter the current time and date, but I didn't want to take time to do that here um, in this video. The last test that's really handy, it's called fader aging. I don't know why they called it that, but what this test does is it runs the faders from, uh, from each extreme end of its range repeatedly until canceled. And this can be handy for exercising faders if you've sprayed contact cleaner in their appropriate cleaner like uh, Deoxit Fader Lube F5. Um, spray that down in there and you want to exercise them and try and get them kind of cleaned out and using some compressed air. This test can help because it takes all the faders up and down and up and down until you cancel it. So I'll show you what that looks like. You just highlight that test on the screen, hit enter, and then it just starts running it. And it'll do this non-stop until you hit cancel. So you can see I've, uh, I've got like this guy's a little bit lazy. I might could jet some air in there or some fader lube and might make that better or I might actually need to take um, the fader panel out and actually disassemble that fader and really clean the element and the wiper. Uh, that's really the only true way to service the faders and it's a little bit involved but but this test can run just running this operation can help improve things sometimes if you have a stubborn or sticky fader or want to exercise in any cleaning um, uh, solution that you put in there like the fader lube so so that is the diagnostic tests um, hopefully this is helpful to you as always uh, if you like this content or you want to be alerted to when new content like this uh, comes out, um, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you ever have any questions, uh, I'm pretty responsive to questions uh, that come up and I'm happy to take time to answer those or um, chat about this kind of content. So thanks for watching.